Hi and welcome to Inside Web Series. I'm David M. Green. In this, our final episode of Inside Web Series ever, till we get picked up for season two, we're going to be listening to some of the best advice and commentary from some of our web series producers, myself included. Advice for people doing web series. Um, do you have four or five hours? <laughs> My advice for those interested in doing a web series would be to just go ahead and start doing it. I'd say, well, just do it. That's what everyone says, so I'm going to say it too. My advice for people that want to start a web series is just just do it. You know what? I say go for it and have a blast. Just give it a go. Just, just do it. You know, um, what have you got to lose? There's a lot of trial and error. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll start with a cop-out answer. Just go and do it. Web series, especially when done independently, you have all the creative freedom in the world. Just go crazy. Just don't worry about anything except telling a good story and having a good time. And there'll be no network executives telling you what to do or calling the shots. You can have complete creative control. I talk to people all the time that have ideas and plans and want to do something but have no idea where or, or when they're going to start. And it's like, just get started. If you want to do it, do it. You have to just start with the writing. Just uh, find someone who's like-minded to work with, who likes working in the genre that you like, and uh, work out how you can come together and make something. You know, you have to be out there in the game and people have to know that you exist. Um, be passionate about it, stop talking about it and just do it. Keep making stuff, guys and girls, just do it. You don't have to have a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars. To create something that's good, if you have a good story, as Herbert was saying, a good story, and you keep it simple, and you start from there. So you start and then you build, and as you build, your budget you know, gets bigger, you can crowdfund, etc. But don't just wait on crowdfunding campaign. Okay, I crowdfunded, nobody wants to finance it. This idea sucks. I'm gonna go back and work, put the, sell an ice cream. You know, no, make, make, get your idea up there, man. Don't wait, create, don't wait, make it happen. I have a motto that perfection and incompletion is inferior to completion and imperfection, which looks better written out than it does if I say it. But what I'm basically getting at is you can spend your time trying to get the most perfect thing in the world out there, but if you don't get it done, it doesn't count. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. First rule of advice for someone trying to start their own web series is one, make it short. The attention span online is very short. It's like two to three minutes max. I see a lot of people who try to, like, out the gate come up with something that's 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, when you think about yourself, if someone puts, someone random puts something on your wall, like, watch this, it's so funny. And you look at the time and you're like, 10 minutes? No, uh-uh. I mean, I honestly feel like I like to take my time with things, but it's really not, it doesn't work online so well. Um, I think ABG was a little bit of an exception um, that we got to kind of play around in that medium, but. Uh, but if you see like two or three minutes, you're like, okay, I have two or three minutes, that's nothing. My advice to you, if you choose to produce a web series, is be passionate about what you're writing because ultimately you have to really want your story to be seen and heard. Um, that's what it comes down to. Um, you'll be getting no sleep, not seeing your friends and family. Um, production is a whole nother s set of headaches, but it's exhilarating. If you are in the business, you better be prepared to be flexible, to be flexible with advertisers because that will be the future. If you're making a, a web series to be experimental and you're doing it with a bunch of friends, you don't have to worry about that as much. The good news, you can do it very inexpensively and so much of it is, is uh, uh, passion and a desire to do something. It's a huge uphill battle, but once you get to the top it's, and, and you've, you've made your first series, it's this amazing sort of empowering feeling. And, and, and from there, you know, you learn so much in the process. You're never quite sure what you might get at the, at the other end. Um, you, ha you might have ideas of how you can reach wide audiences online, but you know, these ideas don't always come to fruition. You know, everyone hopes they're gonna have thousands upon thousands and 10,000, hundreds of thousands of views, 
and st and suddenly get disappointed after a month and it's like oh there's only been about 500 people who've seen it well this is why i think every creator or filmmaker who's embarking on a web series should have a personal goal why are you doing it why are you doing it you know, are you doing it because you want to have some fun with some friends and, hey, if it breaks out, that would be wonderful? Or are you doing it with your advertiser in mind? Why are you making this web series? Really think about what it is that you personally want to get out of it. I think you need to have a personal goal. You could be gone in the morning. Don't want to know if I am So I always say that the best way to start a web series is to try it, to do one episode. And it'll probably suck but you'll learn a lot from doing it. Because here's the thing, you can always take down a video, you know? There, there's no shame in doing, in doing a video, a first episode, get, having it suck, getting feedback from it, going back, trying again, launching the second video, doing an entire series that sucks before you realize what you're doing and then going back and trying another one. So, what do you do? You mean like, what I do or what I do? Because if it's what I do, I'm a sculptor. But if it's what I do, I work at Starbucks. Many popular web series today, many of like the, the top, most subscribed YouTube channels, the first couple episodes suck, like across the board. Most of them suck, unless they had a lot of money or were done by like super professionals or whatever. But like, God, they're terrible. And it takes a while to, to learn the speed of it, to learn your footing, to learn what you're actually doing, you know, to learn the rules of this new medium. Oh yeah, I heard. I tried to tell him it wasn't cool. If you want to make a web series, everybody is going to say the first advice is just do it. And I agree with that. But at the same time, my real advice would be not to underestimate the value of the skill bases. If there's something that you're not good at, be it lighting or sound, don't just assume that you can hand the boom to your friend and everything will be fine. These are crafts and every element of a film has people that train in that element for a reason. You can ask me to keep working for you. Ask you? My advice is get the best people, make sure they're competent and you can rely on them. Know what you know and know what you don't know and make sure you bring in people to help you with the areas that you don't know so you can make the strongest possible delivery of that story. Respeten al espectador, ya sea uno, dos, diez mil, un millón de espectadores, respetenlos, denles un trabajo de calidad Ese es el único consejo que les puedo dar. I basically just think it's important to do whatever you want. Have something unique, uh, different, and not to be predictable, but also to, to have quality and to put a lot of effort into, into your work. And make sure that you love it. You don't need to care if other people are going to like it. You don't need to care if it looks like anything else. In fact, it shouldn't look like anything else. That's the whole point of web series. I mean, let's start a revolution. Let's just do whatever and make it crazy and interesting. First of all, do you have something to say? Do you have a vision? Do you believe in what you're saying? And the rest will take care of itself. You, everybody knows somebody. If you, do you have the ability? If you don't have the ability, do you know people? Can you go and get people who have the talent, who can film, who can shoot, who can do audio? actors who are wonderful who can come in and, and help make your dream a reality if you don't have all the all the tools to do it but the only thing stopping most people from making a, a good web series is uh, themselves it's not Hollywood it's not their parents or their job it's them just give it your all 110 percent especially producers and directors who can tell you that um, it's like a full-time job <laughs> don't let someone else tell you Okay, you can do it. If you really want to do it, you make it happen. You do it. Use your own money. Go to your mother, your uncle, or your aunt, or use your friends. A lot of people will work for free. It just, it's not about money. It's about your vision and your drive and how, how willing you are to bring people together. Most people, for the first one, will do it for free. If they like you, if they believe you, then you build for them. If you love it, and if you put your heart and soul into it, you know, especially with the crew and the actors that are working with you, they'll respect you for that. Even if they don't get it subconsciously, they'll know. They'll 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 feel it. They'll feel the passion. They'll feel the energy. And whatever you have should should shine. So find people who are like-minded, who are just as ambitious and hardworking as you are, and make stuff happen. 
doesn't matter that everyone else is doing it. There's enough room for everybody. You've just got to find your niche and, and work at it. It's very equal opportunity. Anyone can get involved in it. If you get a, you know, get a camera, learn how to edit or get an editor and uh, some wonderful actors, and you can make it happen. My honest opinion is that just like writing poetry, anyone can do it. And it's very hard to do at an, at an elite level and to be the best. That takes skill. Try to write something that's unique. Um, that's unique and relatable. I'm sorry? Derek? Darius. Oh, Darius. <laughs> nice to meet you. Am I responsible for initiating conversation? So are you from around here? Arizona. I live in Cars. Uh, I'm sorry. What? What makes yours different? Like, how? what's the extra punch that you're adding to it? There'll be an audience. There's always going to be an audience, is what I've found. It might start small, it might go viral, who knows? But you won't know unless you try. I think as long as you're keeping it short, to the point, and then if you're creating something that's like, that people haven't seen before, or at least seen in a long time, then you have a good chance at being successful. Don't wait around for an opportunity to fall in your lap because it won't happen that way. Go out and make something. Tell your story and have a great time doing it. Well, we had a lot of fun and shared a lot of laughs on tonight's episode, kids. But before we depart, I wanted to touch up on a serious topic. There is nothing funny about drug addictions. It's a serious problem. Like me, I have a, an addiction to... Project Runway. <laughs> and cocaine. You know, it's, it's great because we're really the punk rock generation of filmmakers. We're, you know, doing this all ourselves. We're breaking the rules and um, audiences are beginning to notice and people are paying attention. And uh, I think that's really where the future of web series are going. I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of them and I think the quality is going to continue to rise. Um, as more content is produced because the bar has been raised. What is the future of web series? Will it merge with TV and online streaming? Will it become solidified into its own format? Will anyone even watch this documentary in one year's time? Is that gas I smell? I think web series are the future of film, really, in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, everything is going online these days. Uh, I mean, ev you know, everything you can kind of possibly imagine is, is online. The future of web series. You know, if I knew the answer to that question, I'd be the richest guy in Hollywood. It's clear the world is moving to distributed entertainment through the web. The technology is just demanding. Uh, so the people who do what we do are the people who have been involved in this for years. I think the future of web series is there'll just be more of them and they will get bigger and bigger and bigger and I think the audience will grow. Um, you know, it's the sort of thing that like, it's a new, it's a new platform for, for things and I think the creators are just starting to realize the potential for web series and what they can do, the stories they can tell and the audiences they can reach. In the future, I think we're going to see a lot more web series. I think we're going to see a lot of variety in web series. Also, more web series delivery platforms. Right now, I feel like web series is almost like a platform to television. What we need is someone to come up with a device, a financial device for production financing, and someone in the marketing and advertising area to come in with a coherent back-end revenue model for us. I'm not sure what the future of web series is. I mean, there's got to be a way to monetize all this hard effort effort. Uh, crowdfunding helps, but that's difficult. And, and uh, you know, ideally you can get uh, sponsorship, but I, that's rare. So, uh, you know, we're still figuring that out. Um, it's tough. It's cool and all, but we really need someone who can pay us money. You don't need to make a show that has to have five million viewers to sustain it. You know, you can get by on 50,000 viewers. We've got to figure out how to make money off of it. And by we, I mean filmmakers and content producers and advertisers in a way that doesn't inhibit the art form. It feels like we're, we're in a, a rough patch, a rough patch that's never going to end. It's a, the roughest patch of land ever. And there's no, it was smooth before, now it's rough and it's too rough. We, it's too, we don't, don't have shock absorbers. The future of this good narrative scripted content will have to be 
it will only be able to be made if it can really effectively reach a specific audience who is very interested in buying specific products. This must be how television felt in the late 40s, early 50s. You know, it was this, this medium that was really exciting and intriguing, but people really didn't know how to make it work for a few years. I think in a few years we'll figure it out. Everybody's still like, ah, oh, TV and movies and stuff like that, but more and more and more people are busier. They go, they watch TV on demand, you know, things like iView or Netflix in the States are, are really big. And I think that web series are there. It's just people don't necessarily know about it yet. The ya las teles ya son de internet con las smart TVs. Entonces, lo que va a pasar es que en, la, en el mismo aparato donde tú ves que digamos una serie de un canal, rápido te puedes ir a YouTube o Vimeo o cualquier otro lugar y ver en el mismo el mismo sistema básicamente una serie de cualquier persona. Entonces, nos pone en el mismo nivel, casi casi. Sí, yo creo que sí, nos pone en el mismo nivel. La persona puede estar en su sofá cómodamente, pues ahora sí, acostada, sentada, viendo la televisión y puede accesar fácilmente a nuestras series. Mm -hmm. We're going to have more and more and more individuals creating web series or just web-based content in the next 100 years as opposed to people making movies. So we're really seeing a shift of where creative people are taking their talents. Because if you really want to be creative and you really want to be an artist and you want to express yourself, the systems that are in place right now aren't the place for you. We really need a network that is uh, hitting the long ball strategically and wants to be in the game marketing-wise, uh, measurement-wise, advertising sales-wise um, to support our industry. I think that uh, web series should have that same kind of punk rock attitude of just if a studio isn't going to give us money, then we're going to do it ourselves however we want, however we can, and we don't have to listen to a studio to tell us what to do. Nosotros sentimos que las series web en un futuro van a ser las nuevas series de televisión. No, no vienen a reemplazar lo que el formato que ya existe, pero vienen a ser otra opción para el espectador que busca ahora sí historias más concentradas, a lo mejor más urbanas. Eh, otro tipo de entretenimiento. I think the net result of being able to have access to equipment and technology at a very early age and being able to interface with the people who've inspired you directly with no no in between at all is going to create a situation where people are inspired to create work by people um, and actually have the resources to do it. You know, I think like with this Facebook, Instagram generation we live in, uh, a lot of our attention spans are um, shortening. So we're going to see web series expanding to larger screens. I think some of the web series are going to become longer in length as they go on to larger screens. I also think they become shorter in length as they go on to smaller screens. I believe that the future of web series is similar to kind of the future of television. On the web it's about hits and all that stuff and on, on regular television it's about uh, the Nielsen's, the ratings, who's watching the show. I think web series will be on the level of television soon. I mean, with the advent of you know Netflix and Hulu having really high quality content, uh, original content streaming online. So we're going to see a blurring of the lines between web and television. That's the future. I mean, that's the future. It's television and web will be the same. The future will eliminate the word web from series, just like it will eliminate the word television from television series. We will have series of varying lengths. Web series really will be more of an independent short form series. It's actually helping a lot of independent artists who a long time ago, you know, way before the web, were probably thinking, you know what, I don't have a budget, I don't have backing for it, you know what, let me just give up. A lot of people are now are saying, you know what, I can do it and I can use that medium and the web, which is totally free. Um, to you know, produce an episode, produce a project, um, produce art. I think this is a great thing. It's, it's a, a new art and a new medium, yet at the beginning we named it based on its delivery method. Well, that's going to change. If you let, find out what the audience wants, that means you have to change the way you're doing things. And I think that what we're seeing today, that's actually happening. Uh, there was an article uh, in Variety yesterday that said the uh, web stars, internet stars, YouTube stars are actually more popular among teenagers than traditional celebrities. I'd say we are in a moment. So what is the future of web series? I would flip the question into an answer that says web series are the future. As we've learned, a web series is not something you can learn through words alone. 
Keeping that in mind, here are some words about web series from some people. We have to believe in ourselves, even though there's no money in this right now. There's not a whole lot of money. And, and you got to be very creative to make money in web series. But it doesn't mean that because you only have 300 views, because you ha you're not making any money, Hollywood was not knocking on your door. It doesn't mean you're not talented. It doesn't mean your content isn't valuable. I love web series, and I'm really happy that I dove headfirst into the world, and I can absolutely see myself continuing to create and produce content for the web. So thank you very much. I'm happy with Too Easy. Um, it, more people watch it than I ever thought would. And it's the sort of thing that if we wanted to make more episodes, we could very easily do so. Another sex injury, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I was doing the reverse, reverse cowgirl. That's when you reverse it back from the initial reverse position and just fucking snap this off the bone, I reckon. Fuck it. I presume that's the good news. Would be for me, anyway. That's actually the bad news, mate. Uh, I still get comments on, the, uh, on YouTube and every now and then get an email saying, Hey, you know, can you, can you give me Alex's email? And that's just so touching. Aqua Black Girl definitely opened a lot of doors for me. Um, as a result of it, I've been able to, you know, write for television. I've had the opportunity to create my own shows. I've had film opportunities. Some of you may have heard that I got the opportunity recently to work with HBO and develop a show with Larry Wilmore, who's a genius. It's, it's opened a lot of doors and it's all because of, you know, the people that I worked with and the people who watched it and shared it. I'm hoping that, again, that this, this series will allow me to change the landscape of television and film in terms of making it more diverse and um, opening the doors for other content creators. I was a self-proclaimed technophobe before I started working on my web series. I've picked up just so many new skills, editing, scripting, shooting, social media, uh, the list just goes on. The learning outcome of, of making a web series just cannot be overstated, I think. There are new and exciting things coming around the corner every day. I think that the challenge is to keep up the great storytelling and keep telling the types of stories that the audiences want to watch. And I think that if, if the audiences are being creatively fulfilled, then there's going to be more demand for even more web series because people want to be entertained and that's why we do what we do. I would say the brightest part of our future is the, the people who do this. Um, you will never meet harder working, better managers in our business than the people who do this. I remember when people laughed at cable. I'm old enough to remember that. They used to say, why would anybody pay for something they get free? They didn't understand why anyone would subscribe to cable. In the 80s, early 80s, I remember that. Now nobody wants to watch free TV, they all want to watch cable. So I feel that that's why you have to believe. I believe in web series. I believe in the future. And I don't care what anybody says, you know. I know that this thing is already huge, it's going to be even bigger. If you believe in what you're doing and you're, you're enjoying it, keep doing it. Don't worry about the money. The money will come. Just keep doing it. There's a hugely bright future for web series. There's just too many creative people across the world doing this. Don't you guys love Aqua Black Girl? Well, I mean, there needed to be a show that highlighted those moments in this genius has figured it out. And we just want you guys to check it out on the I Am Mother channel. It's Awkward Black Girl, or ABG. My name is Jay and I'm Awkward. Like. And Skinny in a cup type. Someone once told he me those are the two breakfast. worst things anyone could be. You walk around naked. I love it, I'm excited, and this is one of our uh, superstars, and you just, you just get ready. It's gonna be cool. Hey, I'm Issa Rae, and thanks for watching Inside Web Series. <laughs> Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching Inside Web Series. Look out for my web series, Too Easy, and my TV game show, 31 Questions. They're both on YouTube. Best of luck to you and your web series. Send me a link when you're done. This has been Inside Web Series. I'm David M. Green, and you can be too.